My name is Detective Hackjack, the number one detective in all of Noirville. It even says so on my mug. I was just about to pack up uh, and head home. See the wife and kids after a long day, when suddenly he appeared, Chief Morrison. You're well aware that crime in Noirville is going up. And the force is understaffed. I'm stuck with a team of rookies, just out of the factory. It's all hands on deck now, and an extra hand would be useful, I guess. Care to help out the force once again, Jack? That was not a question, by the way. Keep your comms online. I'll send a crime sphere straight to your office. Apparently, the force needed me. So I reluctantly took off my hat, took one final puff, and decided that I'd help out the chief. I asked him for the information, and he gave it to me. And this is what Chief Morrison told me. Jack. A shooting went down at notorious mob speakeasy Barry Wire. There are two reported victims. An ordinance D-pad is waiting for you outside the scene. Pick it up and meet me at the entrance. And so I did. I arrived at the Barry Wire and everything was quiet. I got my D-pad which would help me keep track of the case and a special magnifying glass that would eventually show me clues that others had missed. Now I had to hack the door. And get inside. Uh, there, like clockwork, was Chief Morrison. Me and the chief were sinking our memory, hoping to glean some insight. Ah, Mr. Robert Copper. Innocent bystander, he fled the scene unharmed. Hmm. Survey the scene and talk to Miss Quad. Ha <laughs> I'm the chief now. There was another witness. Mr. Hammer Plex. He was a barbot, unroutine at the time. He escaped unharmed. Interesting. Ah, a dancer still danced. Hello, boys. What have you got for me? Howdy. I see you have a hollow magnifying there. My colleague Jerry here lost us. Can you help us looking for clues around here? Classic Jerry move. We're looking for a suspicious liquid. I grab my hollow magnifier glass. <gasps> One suspicious liquid. Two suspicious liquids. Three. It was a come up palooza in here. You weren't supposed to touch the dancer. But I guess you were allowed to touch yourself. It even got on the walls. Thank you, sir. Jerry, take these to lab pronto. Ah, there was a SWAT bot. Things had gotten real serious. Dude, my sensors are going crazy. That wall behind me is hiding something. I'm telling you. Hmm. VIP lounge. Interesting. Could I get in? If I followed the wires... Ah. The cast register. It was a Simon Says game. Good thing we'd studied Simon Says at the Force so many years. I was an old pro. But how is this gonna help me? Only time would tell.
I found my way in. What could be hiding for me around these corners? Anything suspicious up here? What is this? No, but seriously, what? Ah, I remember you, Loretta. You always were a beauty. Hello, hello, Mr. Jack, right? I figured out the position of the suspect. Check it out! Hmm, let's sync our memories, shall we? Oh, I have to dodge shit. The suspect, Mr. Bit Spudnik. He shot at the scene with a gun. I see. Don't mind if I do. See? I told you. There he is. Not so bad, right? Good job, Loretta. Real good. Hmm, Francine. Sir, I am currently investigating the scene for possible links between the victim and the suspect. Bring me these items, please. A wedding ring, a victim's glass, and love disc. Could this be the victim's glass? Possibly. All the love discs? <gasps> Aha! Conveniently right on the table. I was beginning to piece together the clues, kind of, sort of. As expected in cliches, it sounds the victim and the killer had a romantic relationship. Of course they did. I figured out the location. I'd figured out the motive. There was a lover's quarrel. I'd found some fluid, which you know around lovers means sperm. And the suspect is Mr. Bit Spudnik. He's a lowlife from Norarville District 7. A lot of thievery and two arrests for overclocking and traffic. And here's our victim. What do we got, Rogers? The victim was shot, obviously. Was he the target, or was it just a stray shot? Possibly another battery to fix this situation. Analysis. Just as I thought, this one was collateral damage. But at least he went out, drinking. Alright, Rogers, give me that memory. Ah, the real victim is Mr. Elon Boyd. No relation to real people. He was a protein-based pet salesman, just a few years away from obsolescence. His pal Robbie Scrap and him were regulars at the Berry Wine. Mr. Robbie Scrap was having a drink with one of the victims. He escaped unharmed. What the? Ah, ha ha, a unicorn hat. Now the part I've really been looking forward to. This dancer. Oh my. A force field prevents us from accessing the stage. There must be a way to get to her. I was a fan of her. Oh, um, never mind. Uh, you're a pervert, and I already turned off the stage. Hello, lady. Look at this. A bullet. Two bullets. Straight into her chest. A beautiful robot chest. I'm a police officer, I can't do this. You access her data bank? I can only imagine, um, uh, right. Here's what she saw before being terminated. Let's see. Two bullets. My god, he was just spraying this shit. Six bullets in all. Two which wound up right into her chest. The victim is Miss Anne Volta, a famous but butlesque performer. Her perfect radius routine made her famous for fears, but her integrated structure blah blah blah. Her frame model made her unsuitable for a hardware. 
and the weapon. A Gunther Mark III. I'm submitting my evidence. Uh, sure. Is there anything else I wanted to glean here? I think I'd seen it all. A wild shot up there, trying to take her out. Uh, but why? That's for me to figure out. Uh, I'd solved the case and left it up to the cops to figure out how they were going to apprehend him. And yet, the chief told me he wanted more. Apparently that wasn't enough for them. He had a new mission for me. Looks like my wife was going to be blue-balled tonight. <laughs>